33rd meeting in 2013 of the Economy, Energy and Tourism Committee. Uh, can I uh, welcome uh, all uh, members? Um, and remind everyone, please, to turn off or at least turn to silent all mobile phones and electronic devices. Um, can I take the opportunity to welcome Christian Allard, who is in his first meeting in public session of the committee, earlier here privately, and uh, thank Mark McDonald for his service to the committee for the relatively brief time that he was he was with us. And can I also welcome Esme Forrest, who is joining us uh, doing work experience from Dunblane High School. Thank you for coming along. Hope you will enjoy the enjoy uh, observing the committee proceedings. Speaking of the end. So refrain from making any further comment on that. Um, right, item one on the agenda. Um, I'd invite Christian Allard to declare any relevant interests. Thank you for your welcome, Governor. Uh, I would refer my interest to the parliamentary website when everything is declared. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, item two on the agenda. Um, we have a, a negative instrument to consider the electricity generating stations bracket applications for variation of consent bracket, close bracket, uh, bracket, Scotland, close bracket, regulations 2013, SSI 2013 slash 304. Members will recall we did discuss this at last week's meeting briefly and uh, we agreed we would ask the Scottish Government for some further information uh, in relation to the uh, guidance uh, that, that would be issued um, subsequent to this particular SSI. We've had a reply from Fergus Ewing, uh, which has been circulated to members with the uh, draft guidance notes uh, attached to that. Do members have any uh, comments uh, or observations that they want to make in relation to this? Alison? Well, um, I'd just like to say that, that I'm pleased the government could provide the draft guidance on these regulations, but I do still have concerns. Um, in principle, the variation to the ability to vary section 36 is confined. Is, that's fine, but the regulations don't expressly limit in any way the size or significance of the variations. And I think it's important that we have safeguards against consents by the back door. The draft guidance does make it clear that any variations are for changes that couldn't be considered fundament fundamentally different, but that is just in guidance. Whereas in England and Wales, the safeguard is expressly in the regulations, and the RSP briefing on the subject makes that point. And you know, these are the, the English and you know, the version here for, from England and Wales, and, and they are in there. So I don't want to push this to a vote that I may well lose, but <laughs> I, I would ask the convener if the committee could write again to the government expressing thanks for sharing the draft guidance and highlighting the importance of limiting any variation to minor changes, given that the Scottish regulations don't do so expressly. Okay. Thank you for that. Any other comments? Yeah, this, Margaret, um, yes. On the paperwork that we've been given, I don't know what page is or let's see, under paragraph 14 at the bottom, it says, in principle, there's nothing to stop section 36 variation process being used to facilitate changes which would involve development outside the red line mm. boundary indicated in the existing consent. And I think that. Um, probably ties up with mm -hmm. what Alison has been saying. So I think that's a bit concerning that mm -hmm. it would allow for that further extension and without any necessary uh, right, fresh planning. application. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mike? I, I, I feel I want to just respond to the point Margaret's made. I think, I think it's a pretty good point. However, um, the red line boundary in a planning application is a very arbitrary boundary. You could Put the map of Scotland inside that red boundary if you really wanted to. That 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 that's a very kind of technical point that, um, you know, they're they're honing in on this, looking for. I think they're tilting at windmills if you see what I mean. Looking at, you know, looking for problems that are not there. I do think that, um, you know, planning authorities are going to be. Uh, you know, not dismissed, they're going to be involved in this process and they'll certainly blow the whistle if they feel that this is actually something that requires a fresh application. And I'm sure, you know, Alison will know that Scotland is stuffed full of people who will also point the finger and shout quite loudly if that, you know, borderline is, is, is uh, you know, transcended. And, um, you, you know, so I think actually we're, the, the danger is in tilting at windmills 
And the other thing, the background against which we must consider this is the fact that Ofgem have been warning the, you know, um, warning that we're now down to a 2% reserve capacity generation factor. 2% is way below the safe level. The safe level is regarded at 30% as, as, as at 30%, and there is a very real danger of the lights going out. So to place further obstacles in the way of maybe quite minor alterations to a, you know, a generation scheme um, on the basis of mm, you know, tilting at windmills, perhaps I think would be unreasonable. Is that intentional, tilting at windmills? I, I don't think it was intending to place obstacles in the way of any minor alteration. I think I just wanted an assurance that any alterations that were going to be discussed by this method were minor, if that makes sense. I know that there is a suggestion about, you know, let's not make it into a big issue, but we're not making a big issue. That's the reason we're just simply writing and drawing their attention to it. I think it's, it's quite minor and the latter will reflect that. I don't think people should go on to auto defence immediately. Well, look, I mean, I think where we are, this is a negative instrument. It's up to any member if they want to, to lodge a motion to annul. Nobody's done that. I don't think anybody's suggesting we should annul this. So, mm -hmm. so on that, on the on the substantive point, we are agreed. Um, uh, the question that's been put forward by Alison strikes me as a, a probably reasonable one. Do we do we write to ministers and, and, and make this point and say this is an issue that's been raised by members? And we hope they would bear it in mind. Yeah. Is, are people content with that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we will proceed on that basis. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, at that point, I think we move into private session. <laughs>